Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janam Vallam Giri Vardhan Hari Jaya Gopi Janam Vallam Giri Vardhan Hari Yashura Nandana Bhajajana Ranjana Yashura Nandana Bhajajana Ranjana Jamuna Tiravana Chari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Mr. Pad Paramahansa Padrika Charja Astotara to the Sri Srimad, the Divine Grace, Srila AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. I take it back. Yeah. Iskan BBT founder of Charja Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Paravitaka Charja Ashto Tarata Dishvi Srimadha Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vinda Ki Jai Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai Samaveda Bhakti Vinda Ki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees all glory to Shiguru and Goranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Okay, let me just make sure. I have 19. Verse 19, right? Okay. On the 16th day of February 2022 in San Diego, San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are in Chapter 2 entitled, Contents of the Gita Summarized. Text number 19. Ya enam veti huntaram yaschainam manyate hatam ubhau tau nabijanito nayam hanti nahanyate Yahe nam beti huntaram Yaschainam manyate hitam Ubao tau nabijani to Nayang hunti nahanyate Yahe nam beti huntaram Yaschainam manyate hitam Ubhau tau na vijani to Nayang hanti na hanyate Ya enam veti hantaram Yaschainam manyate hatam 
O bauta on of Jani to Nayam Hunt in a Hunday. Ehenum Beti Huntaram Yestinum Munday Hitum. O bauta on of Jani to Nayam Hunt in a Hunday. Yehe nam beti hantadam, Eshtainam man hite hitam, O bow down of Ijani to, Nayam hunt in a hunyate, Yehe nam beti hantadam, Eshtainam man hite hitam, O bow down of Ijani to Nayam Hunti Nahanyate Yehe nam beti hantaram Yestinam man hite hitam O bow down of Ijani to Nayam Hunti Nahanyate Ladies Yehe nam beti huntaram Yestinam man hite hitam O bow down of Ijani to Nayam hunt in a hunyate Yehe nam beti huntaram Yestinam man hite hitam O bow down of Ijani to Nayam hunt in a hunyate Yehe nam beti huntaram Yes, China man hite hatam O bow down of Ijani to Nayam hunt in a hunyate Zoom land Okay, no, all right. Ya, anyone who, enam, this, veti, knows, huntaram, the killer. Yaha, anyone who, cha, also, enam, this, manyate, thinks, hatam, killed. Ubao, both, tau, they, na, never, bijanitaha, are in knowledge. Na, never, I am, this, hunti, kills, na, nor, hanyate, is killed. Translation. Krishna says to Arjun. Neither he who thinks the living entity the slayer, nor he who thinks it slain is in knowledge, for the self slays not nor is slain. Purport. When an embodied living entity is hurt by fatal weapons, it is to be known that the living entity within the body is not killed. The spirit soul is so small that it is impossible to kill him by any material weapon, as will be evident from subsequent verses. Nor is the living entity killable, because of his spiritual constitution. What is killed, or is supposed to be killed, is the body only. This, however, does not at all encourage killing of the body. <coughs> the Vedic injunction is mahing syat sarva bhutani. Never commit violence to anyone. Nor does understanding that the living entity is not killed encourage animal slaughter. Killing the body of anyone without authority is abominable and is pu punishable by the law of the state as well as by the law of the Lord. Arjun, however, is being engaged in killing for the principle of religion and not whimsically. Om jnana timarandasya jnanandana shalakaya chakshu unmiditam mena tasmai shri gadave namaha I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisances unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So Krishna is, if you will, right in the beginning here, refuting the basic principle of Arjuna's argument, which is that he's going to be responsible for killing all these uh, people who he knew and loves and has great respect for. But Krishna is saying right here, no one is ever killed. Uh, although the body may be slain, but he's just explained very clearly that the, that the body is not the self. So you, there's really no death, as will be explained very, very distinctly in the next verse, which is perhaps the most famous verse in this whole chapter. 
So I put it into a little ditty. Everybody dies. <laughs> Nobody dies. Wake up, wake up, and open your eyes. You're not that body of pure spirit soul. Chant the holy name and attain life's goal. <laughs> but that, but Prabhupada preached on that basis so many times. Is that the the body is going to die one day or another anyway? But you're not. That 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 basic principle of that we're not the body, that we're eternal. That therefore our goals and our efforts should be aimed at realizing that and living in that reality, and regaining that spiritual life. We've all been an illusion since time immemorial, leading a, a, a succession of dream lives, really. These, these, these material lives have the quality of a dream. They're always changing. We forgot it, right? Didn't forget the last life. Does anyone here know what, what he was doing in his last life? No. Just like you wake up in the morning, you may have had a very vivid dream, you may remember a little bit of it, then your day begins and it's gone. Right? It's gone. <laughs> now, when you first wake up, if it's a good dream, you may think, oh, let me see if I can capture that again. <laughs> but it's a bad dream, you think, oh, thank God, it's just a dream. Either way, <laughs> it's gone. You forget. So it's a mini death sleep. Yeah? You're in another world, you're in another life, and the priorities are different, everything. So, so what, what is Im important, what is significant, is the sat, the sat versus the asat. That's, that's the basic argument here. Sat, if you recall, means the existent. That which is exists means that which eternally exists. The asat means it's temporary. It's not that it's uh, false, but it's temporary, and therefore its existence is just like a dream. You can't say dreams are unreal. Something's going on in there. But you, what, what you think it is is not true. In other words, it's, there's something firing in the brain and you put together, you know, you see in the gold, you see in mountain, you make a golden mountain, or you, you know, you, 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 you take revenge on your worst enemy, or you run from your worst enemy, whatever it may be, you know, you're not in control. But, it, but whatever it is, it's temporary, and you say, oh, thank God, that was just a dream. And actually, when we go back to God, it, we'll be very thankful that this was all just a dream, all of these deaths and these pains and all of these disappointments and uh, suffering that we went through. So this is uh, another verse that where Krishna is summing up very concisely here, that one who thinks that, that someone dies and one who thinks that someone kills are both an illusion. Because w what, what's happening is simply uh, a change of venue or a change of, uh, of a vehicle that you're forcing. If you, if you hijack someone's car and they're left walking on the street and then they have to take the bus, they've changed vehicles. You haven't killed anybody. <laughs> so we're, every, every time we die, we, we're forced to change our vehicle. That's what happens. And according to how we work, like how we act in this particular life, that will determine our destiny, what kind of vehicle we get. But we will get some vehicle. It may be a tree, it may be a demigod, be depending on our work. But both, both of them are still dream worlds, dream lives. They're temporary, and again, we have to come back. So we want to try to end this uh, succession of disappointing dream lives and come to the reality, the sat. What is that famous phrase? Maybe, maybe you, you learned it as children, those who grew up in India. Asato ma sat gamaya amitam ma mitu ma amitam gamaya. Tamas o ma jyoti gamaya. Yeah, <laughs> I always forget the order. But basically it says, now there's two ways of understanding this. Prabhu would take that ma to be don't. That's, an, that's the meaning of it, not. So that, that's an injunction from the Vedas. Don't stay in the darkness, come to the light. Don't stay with the in, impermanent, come to the eternal. Don't uh, stay with the world of death, march your loka, but come to the nectar, the, the world of eternal life. Or it's a prayer. Ma can be me. Oh Lord, please take me from darkness to light, from death to immortality, from uh, illusion to reality. Yeah. So that's a, it's a very nice, I remember learning that before I even heard of Hare Krishna, because I was in some yoga studio. It's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge for us, for every soul, to recognize that reality, rather than just trying to stay within the darkness, within the duality, and make the best use in that way. It's a, it's a tragic loss of the human life. So, so much of Prabhupada's preaching was, 
this, this uh, uh, waking us up to the great value that we have and to use the facility that we've been given for striving for our eternal life. And the wonderful thing is Krishna helps. As soon as you, you, I remember this vividly when I first heard it. If you take one step toward Krishna, he takes ten steps toward you. <laughs> what is this whole idea that you chant his name once? And there's one verse in the Bible term which says you even hear his name once, which is very important because, you know, you're on the street. I mean, I spent a lot of time on the street when I first joined. Every, every day for about three hours, you know. And so many people, they go by. You know, and we, 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 we counted a victory if they don't close their ears. At least they heard the holy name. <laughs> and then there's those rare souls who stop and actually do a little chanting, you know. But there's so many, there's so many verses described. Oh, if someone just chants one time, one name, then you eradicate so many sins. And, and it's, it's very auspicious, you know. But, but there's a verse in the sixth canto, I, can, I don't have it memorized, where it says, even if you hear the name once, you may be a devotee, not a devotee, but it enters your ears and it registers there. Then so many sinful reactions are destroyed. Now that, that's something you know, where, you, where you think, well, God must be su supremely fair, right? But that's not, that's not fair. That's like, a, that's like a, you know, you're, you're hearing his name once by accident and, and all his karma is, is eradicated. The point is he really wants us to come back. And if he sees any little flicker of connection, interest, just like you know, nowadays, because money is it, it, the inflation and, and money is worth nothing, you see, you find change on the ground, especially pennies, dimes. You know, you, people don't bother to pick them up. In the old days, they did. So you may find this, this nickel. I think I have one in my pocket now. Uh, somebody dropped it. Who, who knows? You know, they may not even known they dropped it. But whatever it is, it's connected to them. They earned it. They wanted gambling. However, it's connected to, huh? They may have actually just thrown it away. You know, who wants to, you know, weighing down your... So anyway, you take that and if you put it into the little box there, that's their service for this life. And it, it, it counts. It counts, you know. They may get a next, uh, next life, get a, a human birth and meet Hare Krishna. So the idea is that, that Krishna wants us to come back to him much more than we, we want to. And so much of his uh, activity when he's here, giving the Bhagavad Gita, arranging for this war, getting rid of all the demons, and not just this Bhagavad Gita, don't forget the Uddhava Gita. That's a, w a wonderful book in the 11th canto. It's actually, I think, longer than the Bhagavad Gita, more verses. But anyway, <coughs> he is tr trying to uh, reestablish Dharma. We know that from the fourth chapter. Because without Dharma, we're just le leading animal lives. One, one time we come up to the human life, and we commit all kinds of sins, back down we go for who knows how many thousand years. It's a tragic tragedy. And we're all related to him. Just think of us as his children. He, he claims us as such. Aham bija padak pita. I am the seed giving father. So a father's, you know, he's such a loving father, he never washes his hands. <laughs> Millions of years we've been wandering, rebelling against him, sinning, you know. He said, okay, well, let me, let me go down again. You know, send my emissary. You know. <laughs> Somehow. So this movement is a, is a manifestation. Of course, it's, you know, connected with Krishna himself, through Lord Chaitanya and Bhagavad Gita, and, but all of his uh, sincere emissaries and representatives, like Srila Prabhupada, they sacrificed their lives, really, to give us a chance to understand the reality and give us the process by which we can realize it. Gyan and Vigyan. So we should take advantage of it. And here the simple uh, verse, that no one kills and no one is killed. Uh, all we're doing is changing bodies. And that, and that is, uh, it's a painful experience. It's a painful, you know, we know that. Uh, that, you don't, that you don't have to wait for your own death to find out. I mean, I remember I used to work in a hospital. Oh, my God, so much anxiety and so much distress. These people who are, you know, know they're going to die and it's terminal. I've seen so much of that, you know. And... Uh, at the time, I was reading Bhagavad Gita, not this Bhagavad Gita, and, and chanting Hare Krishna. I would try in my own way to project the holy name, you know, silently, to try to help them somehow, you know. I didn't know what I was doing. But uh, it, it's in, in the hospital, the hospitals you see now, of course, the hospital is under tremendous strain with this COVID. But you see all four of these things. Birth, old age, disease, and death are all manifested there. You know. And, and uh, it it's sobers you. You're reading the Bhagavad Gita, you know, one should understand what Janma Mitra Jadavyadi Dukkha Doshana Doshana. 
you really that verse is uh, you, you realize that verse you know so i uh, you know that's that was a Krishna arranged that and uh, along with without the bhagavad gita it wouldn't have helped but it made me very interested in uh, spiritual matters and liberation, things like that. Okay, any questions on this particular verse? Yes, Prabhu. Hare right, Krishna. Um, I said in the text, in the purport, the last sentence, however, Arjuna is being engaged to care for the, princi the principles of religion. I just wanted to know, like nowadays, most wars are happening because of religion. What, what is that? Most, most fighting and killing are happening on the basis of religion. Well, that's and debatable, but it, it's certainly many of them. Oh, are. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I but, like, what is it to say that they're not, you know, they're doing the work of God for some well, people? Well, you have to see what is that religion. Yeah. What, you yeah. know, what, what, yeah. what's the nature of it? And, and uh, I'm not going to get into a whole, you know, analysis of, of, the, of the many, many religious wars that are involved, but, it, but the, the idea is that that's why when we're reading this, you know, Krishna is directly involved. There's no question that the, and the result of the war was not that, you know, one, one group became dominant and then they, 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 they were able to exploit the land and the other people enslaved them and all that, you know. Um, there, there was uh, the reinstitution of Dharma in the person of Yudhishthira and Krishna soon departed the scene, even though he had you know, been 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 arranged. Uh, he he had wanted it to happen. At a certain point, he tried to stop it. You know that he tried to have some mediation, but the other side was adamant, and so it wasn't possible. Uh, and and the result of it was is that the Kali Yuga still came, but it was you know at least a smooth transition. You know, Yudhishthira was there, then Parikit was there, the Bhagavatam was spoken. So you really have to see what is what is the motive. Of the of of, of the, uh, those who are on, on the side, Yudhishthira was 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 uh, crestfallen. He was devastated by all of the death that took place, and Arjun didn't even want to fight. And Prabhupada makes it clear in the purport, oh, because of his soft-hearted nature, you know, he thought. Uh, I, I said, I won't be happy even if I get sovereignty like the king, like the demigods in heaven. Who needs this kingdom? I'm I'd rather go to the forest. So you see the nature of the people who are actually in the forefront of the war. Krishna himself and used here and you know his brother. And that and that the result, uh, if you read in uh, Bhagavatam, when Yudhishthira was king, people were happy, the, even the nature was co cooperating, you know, the earth the, 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 there was just enough rain at the right time, you know, it rained at night and the, I mean even the demigods were pleased. So so y you see Prabhupada had this phrase, one of these early phrases you memorize, Palena Padichiyate. You can judge a thing by the fruit, by what actually the result is. And some of these religious wars, I mean, I'll just say the Crusades, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, you know, auspicious, to say the least, you know. And uh, so many other religious wars took place, or in the name of religion, let's put it that way. So, so we have to use our intelligence and see what is, what is the motive of those on the side, you, you know, that claim it's religious war, and what's the result and uh, uh, the result in this case was a uh, flowering of prosperity and dharma among the people. Same thing with uh, Ram's war. Now it was, it was uh, you know, based on the fact that his wife was kidnapped. But the thing is, that was, that was a symptom of the evil of Ravana and his kingdom. So destroying that kingdom and so forth. And then the, the Ram Raj took place. Even today people want Ram Raja. The, ho the whole idea is that the king, the leader, the president, whatever you want to call him, has to be, has to care primarily or exclusively about the welfare of the, of, the, of the people. Where do you find that today? It's a joke. You know, it's just like, it's, it's, it's a big contest to see who can get to the top and, and exploit and cash in as much as possible. Corruption is rife, is, is everywhere. So even if they may claim it's religious, which I don't think today, I don't, I don't know if this happens so much, but it's uh, the, the re the f by the fruit you judge it. It didn't come out that way, so that's the difference. You know, we have to use our intelligence. All right, we should forge ahead. Oh, one more. Yeah, it's Dimitri. actually very quick. Uh, as you were saying about the uh, the coin, if you drop it here at the temple, you get a benefit. 
But no, I was no, no, not the top. They drop it on the street. You see it, pick it up and yeah, put it yeah, in. Yeah, you pick it up and put, put yeah, it in. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm sorry. That's what I mean. And and so all all, all the people who had the coin in the in 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 you know if you tra trace back you know all the people will get a benefit. Only the person who lost that coin. Well, just, that's that's a vision I don't have. <laughs> I I I think it's the people who had some claim to it, some and then uh, you know it's still connected to them because they. <laughs> I don't know. All all I know it's it's suspicious, you yeah. know, to put that in there because yeah. okay. it, it, they're connected to it, you know. Okay. Thank and we you. should we should try to make them more directly connected. Give them a book. That's you know a million times better. But at least it's something, you know. All right. Here we go with this key verse in the Gita. Najayate mriyate bhakadachin. Nayam bhutva bhavitava nabuya. Adonitik Shasvato Yam Purano Nahanyate Hanyamani Shariri. For the soul, there is neither birth nor death at any time. He has not come into being, does not come into being, and will not come into being. He is unborn, eternal, ever existing, and primeval. He is not slain when the body is slain. Purport. Qualitatively, the small atomic fragmental part of the Supreme Spirit is one with the Supreme. <coughs> Qualitatively. He undergoes no changes like the body. Sometimes the soul is called a steady or kuta sta. The body is subject to six kinds of transformations. It takes its birth from the womb of the mother's body, remains for some time, grows, produces some effects, gradually dwindles, and at last vanishes into oblivion. The soul, however, does not go through such changes. The soul is not born, but because he takes on a material body, the body takes its birth. The soul does not take birth there, and the soul does not die. Anything which has birth also has death. And because the soul has no birth, he therefore has no past, present, or future. He is eternal, ever-existing, and primeval. That is, there is no trace in history of his coming into being. Under the impression of the body, we seek the history of birth, etc., of the soul. The soul does not at any time become old, as the body does. The so-called old man, therefore, feels himself to be in the same spirit as in his childhood or youth. The changes of the body do not affect the soul. The soul does not deteriorate like a tree, nor anything material. The soul has no byproduct either. The byproducts of the body, namely children, are also different individual souls. And owing to the body, they appear as children of a particular man. The body develops because of the soul's presence, but the soul has neither offshoots nor change. Therefore, the soul is free from the six changes of the body. In the Kata Upanishad 1 to 18, we also find a similar passage which reads, I'll say you say, The Jayate Mriyate Bhavi Pashtin, Nayam Kutashtin Nababu Vakashit. The meaning and purport of this verse is the same as in the Bhagavad Gita. But here in this verse there is one special word, the paschit, which means learned or with knowledge. The soul is full of knowledge or full always with consciousness. Therefore, consciousness is the symptom of the soul. Even if one does not find the soul within the heart where he is situated, one can still understand the presence of the soul simply by the presence of consciousness. Sometimes we do not find the sun in the sky owing to clouds or for some other reason, but the light of the sun is always there, and we are convinced that it is therefore daytime. As soon as there is a little light in the sky early in the morning, we can understand that the sun is in the sky. Similarly, since there is some consciousness in all bodies, whether man or animal, we can understand the presence of the soul. This consciousness of the soul is, however, different from the consciousness of the supreme, because the supreme consciousness is all knowledge, past, present, and future. The consciousness of the individual soul is prone to be forgetful. When he is forgetful of his real nature, he obtains education and enlightenment from the superior lessons of Krishna. But Krishna is not like the forgetful soul. If so, Krishna's teachings of the Bhagavad Gita would be useless. 
There are two kinds of souls, namely the minute particle soul, Anu Atma, and the super soul, Vibhu Atma. This is also confirmed in the Kata Upanishad 1 to 20 in this way. I'll say, you say. Adoraniyan Mahato Mahiyan. Atma Sejanto Nihito Gohayam. Tamakatu Pashati Vita Shoko. Datu Prasadan Mahima Namatmana. Both the super soul, the Paramatma, and the atomic soul, the Jivatma, are situated on the same tree of the body within the same heart of the living being. And only, only one who has become free from all material desires, as well as lamentations, can, by the grace of the Supreme, understand the glories of the soul. <coughs> Krishna is the fountainhead of the super soul also, as it will be disclosed in the following chapters. And Arjun is the atomic soul, forgetful of his real nature. Therefore, he requires to be enlightened by Krishna or by his bona fide representative, the spiritual master. So, uh, you can see why this is called the Gita Upanishad. This verse is practically identical from the Katu Upanishad. Prabhupada explains that the, the, the uh, and in the Gita Mahatma, you may w when we read the introduction, it says, Savo Upanishado Gavo, that all the Upanishads are like a big cow. And Krishna is milking that cow and coming up with the essence called the Bhagavad Gita, which he's then giving to Arjun. But everyone knows that the calf doesn't drink all the milk, and so we're also meant to drink that same cow milk, which is the, the essence of the, uh, the Upanishads. So you'll find many verses that uh, echo the Upanishadic truths here, and this is the most obvious one. So here it says, he has not come into being, does not come into being, and will not come into being. That means it's not like there's new souls being created all the time. It, 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 we're as eternal as Krishna is. That's what it means, does not come into being and will not come into being. So we're already, there's an infinite number of souls, but it's not like there's a soul factory that you know, Krishna is producing more new souls all of a sudden. Every one of us is uh, primeval, means that we're, uh, Purana means that we're as old as Krishna, I mean, ageless. So that's really uh, kind of a mind blower, you know, I mean, we were around, you know, who knows, for millions of years, millions of years, we saw so many things, but we just forgot because of our minute nature. But, but the memory, uh, especially what's important to us, of our life in Goloka is still there. And that's, that's, what co that's what coming to this material world really means. It means forgetting. Forgetting. Prabhupada has this classic uh, explanation because this question kept coming up. If you study Prabhupada's letters, which is fascinating, you'll find that at least a dozen times devotees asked, wrote to Prabhupada and asked him, how is it that we left the spiritual world if it was so much, there was so much bliss there? Why would we ever do that? And Krishna says back in the Bhagavad Gita, yad gat vanana Once you go there, you don't come back. Okay, so we were once there. What's the difference? You know, and <laughs> it's a puzzling question. So uh, Prabhupada would always, say, would always answer in this way that or often answer in this way, that uh, since we're part and parcel of Krishna, we have his qualities in a minute degree. That's, we're qualitatively one, but quantitatively different, obviously. So one of those qualities is independence. Independence. We have a certain amount of freedom. Now, if, in, and we go into higher forms, you get more independence. Well, what kind of independence does a tree have? It can't even move, you know. Maybe you can move the, 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 you know, to get more sunlight. I think they, obviously the sunflowers do that. You know, they move around like this. That's their free will, you know. But it's a tragic loss. We, they're the same as us. The soul in that sunflower plant or the tree are equivalent, but they've lost practically all their independence. But in the spiritual world, uh, we're known as tatasta shakti, meaning we're on the margin. We're marginal energy of Krishna. And that means that we have the freedom to focus on the material or on the spiritual. Because that otherwise there's no meaning to love. Love has to be freely given. So Krishna takes a risk, if you will, because he wants to enjoy the, the, that rasa. There's no rasa with a slave. There's a word in the, that, that sometimes we find in the books, the, the, uh, the uh, rasa of servitude. You know, we have the servitude and we have friendship, sakya, like that, you know. But servitude, I think we're going to change because you look it up in the dictionary. 
it's only like slavery. It's not, it's not freely given. Robert also used the term servitorship, which I think is, is more accurate. But the, but the idea is that in the spiritual world, it's all freely given. Here it's coerced. You have to serve. You have to serve the body. You have to serve this one, that one, this one, you know. And you think if you break free of a service, then you have to take another service. But none of it is, is, is the rust of, of in the spiritual world is not there. There's a reflection of it sometimes, and it's, we, we want that. You know, a mother and child is the most pure one. You know, man and woman like that. It's, re it's a re reflection of the original Ras. But it's temporary. Even in the greatest, most ideal marriage, they even started out until death was part, right? <laughs> what, happened? what happens to the, to the relationship? It's over. And then when you, you leave this body, the relationship is one of bodies. So when you leave the body, the relationship is gone. Finished. You know, all of that focus you put on that. So, uh, so we have this free will, and there is no explanation. Why would we, we're part of the group, we're in the minority, I think we're one-fourth, but uh, roughly, of the, living, of the living entities are in the material universes. There's many. Uh, so we made that mistake, and now we want to reverse it. Now we want to, you know, that was a big mistake. Now let's again turn, turn toward Krishna and awaken our original loving relationship with him, which is there. We don't know what it may, it may be servitorship. It may be friendship. It may be mother or fatherhood like that. That's the whole idea. So, so the, the, he, Prabhupada describes it as kind of dreaming, as dreaming. That, that uh, just like you know, Mahavishnu is something that said all of these universes, they're all his dreams. But we're, we're, we're in this dream world, and it's even described like that. This verse appears five times in the Bhagavatam. Arte vidyamane pi, sanskriti nanavartate, dhyayato vishaya nasya, swapne nartagamo yata. Swapna is a dream. So he says, in reality, in the ultimate reality, uh, the samsuti, samsara, the birth, old age, and disease, doesn't really exist. Uh, but it, as long as we're meditating, dhyayato vishayan, on the object of the senses, we're looking for sense gratification, we'll experience it as if it is completely real, because, because just as in a nightmare, it doesn't cease until you wake up. The suffering is there. You're sweating. You, you make up screaming. You know, thank God it was just a dream. So we'll, when we wake up from this dream, we'll say, oh, thank God, it's just a temporary. <laughs> it's not the reality. <laughs> so that, that's a very important concept. Do we want to stay in this dream world where we have the illusion of independence and we get slapped down birth after birth? You know? And sometimes we lose the human form and you know, we have to grovel around as some animal or something. You know, that's the reality. <laughs> or do we want to be free of it finally after who knows how many lives, and resume our you know, eternal life in the spiritual world. It's a no-brainer to make the choice, but it's a struggle to get back to that point because we've, we're so conditioned, we're so used to identifying with this body and flesh and blood. So all of this instruction that Chris is giving uh, is enlightening. If we accept it as the truth, this one verse should... Uh, bring out about a revolution in everyone's consciousness. This idea that, oh, there's no death, there's no birth, there's no death, and, and uh, I myself am unborn, I, I'm eternal, you know, and I won't die. So now how can I realize that? I accept that I'm a pure soul, but I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not realizing it. It's all theoretical at this point. So Krishna consciousness helps you, the process, to, to live the life on this basis, and then to come to the point of actually realizing it, as we see Sri Prabhupada did. And the evidence is that, Prabhupada argues, the evidence that you're really making, becoming Krishna conscious, you're becoming really, really detached from material sense pleasure. It's no, it's no longer even uh, attractive, because you know, you know how poisonous it is, but even there, it's, it's, you're becoming more and more attracted. The Krishna was the antidote to that attraction. Prabhupada liked, he loved to quote this verse. It's near the end of the instructions of the four Kamaras to Maharaj Pritu in the fourth canto. Yet pada panga japalasa vilasa bhaktya karma shayan gudditam utkuti yanti santa tadvan rikta matayo yatayo pi ruddha sroto ganastamadanam bhaja vasudevam. Who can say what that last, that last phrase means? Bhaja vasudevam. Anyone want to take a guess? Worship vasudev. Worship Krishna. 
So the word says yet pada pankaja palasha balasa bhaktiya. That pada pankaja is the lotus feet of Krishna. Vilasa, yet pada pankaja, excuse me, palasha. So the, the, the palasha means the petals, the petals of the lotus, um, the petals of the lotus feet are the, the toenails. So they were worshiping the toenails of Krishna. Effulgent toenails, just like stars, effulgent, you know, wonderful. Vilasa, vilasa, bhaktiya. And in with bhakti, you're experiencing vilas. Vilas means spiritual pleasure. That spiritual pleasure, karma shayam kritita mudgutayanti santa. These are for the saints, the santas, the devotees. They're the, the knots in the heart, which we've been called tying tight for to time immemorial, get cut and untied and finished. Vilasa bhaktiya karma shayam. Karma shayam means your aspiration for fruit of activity. Just like we have, what, is my, what do we sing every morning? The Tulsi prayer? My asha, my, my, I long to be reinstated in the Radha Krishna Leela, back in Vrindavan. I'm praying to you, O Tulsi. Whoever takes shelter of you has his wishes fulfilled. You see? That, you find that in the prayers. They often say that. Oh, Jagadisha. You say, oh, you're the, the master of the universe. You can fulfill any of my desires. Now the question is, what are you going to desire? You know, what, what is Maharaj's favorite phrase? A home by the sea. I forget how it goes. In other words, something material. No. My, my desire is that I, I be in you know, eternal place in Vrindavan so I can you know, serve Radha and Krishna. So, so, but to come to that desire is not easy because we have all these other desires. So here this verse says, if you worship Vasudeva, worship Krishna, then that, the pleasure you get from that, and eventually it becomes very pleasurable, unties all these knots in the heart. But others, such as the meditators, the impersonalists, the jnanis, the yogis, whose mind is devoid of bhakti, they may perform these severe austerities, trying to burn out this material desire, but they, they cannot untie those knots. It's not, it's not possible. They still have material desire, and that's why you find the yogis coming to the West and trying to cash in and the whole thing. You know? Even I was telling how the, uh, the Kumbh Mela, when they come out from the hill, these are serious yogis. They look like they're 30, but they're actually 150. You know? But what, what happened? There was a big rumble. Well, who's going to bathe in just the right time? In the, in the confluence. You know, this, the different parties of yogis were fighting that. The, the, the uh, soldiers had to come in and break them up. And the devotees, what were they doing? Hare Krishna. <laughs> Would you like some prasada? <laughs> they were there just to <laughs> preach. <laughs> they were already liberated. <laughs> what is that verse? You know, Bilba Mangal Thakur. He quoted this verse. Bhakti stri stadatada bhagavan nidisad daivena nakpaliti divya kishoda muti Mukti Swayam Mukulitanjali Sevatesman Dharma Takama Kata Yaksameya Patiksha. That my dear Lord, Bilba Mangataka, is in the, near the end of his uh, Karnamita. If someone is fixed in devotion to you, Bhakti Sri Siddhatada Bhagavan, then he will get the fruit of that bhakti. And what is that? You know, he says, there's a vision of your beautiful adolescent form. That's it. Daivan Paliti Divya Kishore Murti, your divine Kishore Murti. And as far as Mukti is concerned, she's waiting by the door with the Anjali Mudra, which is, I mean, how can I serve you? You see? <laughs> in other words, you're already liberated. And whatever you need in the way of Dharma, Arta, and Kama, the other three of the four, you know, Dharma, Arta, Kama, Moksha, they're also with her. You know, yes, you need some Kama. You have to have something to eat, you know, so you have some Prasad. Yeah, that's all waiting for you. But you're, you're, not, you're not even striving for those. You're not even thinking about those. You're thinking of just relishing the beauty of Krishna who's appeared to you, who you know, so wonderf wonderfully appeared to Bilba Mangal, even though he was blind. He keeps talking about the vision. There's, a, there's another verse. I remember when, I, when we uh, came to the 87th chapter, this was the last time we came through the Bhagavatam. I think I've been one and a half times now we're reading the whole Bhagavatam. So the 87th chapter, that's the prayers of the personified Vedas. It's, it's, if you read the Krishna book, or let's say when you read the Krishna book, you'll find that it's, it's by far the longest chapter by about a thousand percent. It's huge. It takes up the whole one of uh, uh, half of one of the th three books that came out in. So anyway, uh, those prayers are in a unique meter. Uh, I, I memorized one of them. I memorized several, but forgot several too. But one that always sticks with me: Twadanupatam kudai in the mat masurit priyavat chadatitaton maketu hi tepe atmani cha nabadadamanda ho asadupasana yatmahano. It's a great verse with a wonderful purport by 
His Grace Gopi Puranadana Prabhu, who did the last 10 chapters of the 10th canon, all on his own. Uh, I did the English. So, what does it mean? It says, My dear Lord, the human form of life is, is, the be- is very highly suited to serve you. And uh, if one does serve you, then the body becomes his best friend and very dear because it's paraphernalia for serving you. It's not a big burden and a source of such misery. But those, alas, who don't serve you, don't take their pleasure in serving you, then what are they going to do? They worship the impermanent. A sadhupasanaya. A sadhupasanaya. A sadhupasanaya atmahano, which is vers- virtual a suicide for the soul. You can't kill the soul. We're just reading that. But it just buries him in illusion for who knows how many births. And what's the result? Oh, he keeps wandering in the material world, taking on bad bodies, subhuman bodies, which are, cause great fear and darkness, alas. So I was thinking, I wonder if there's some verses that Bilva Mangataka wrote in that meter. And I have a whole archive of verses, not only Karnamita verses, but other verses. So I found one that was just perfect. And uh, I, I learned it, and I taught it to one uh, bhakta here years ago. He just showed up a few weeks ago. I couldn't recognize him. He had a beard and everything. And he said, oh, this is Kareem. Bhakta Kareem, didn't I teach you a verse? I said, yes. And he, he remembered a couple of words of it. And then I, I had forgotten it also. But this is the verse. Dutta Tapani, this is Bilva Mangal's vision with his blind eyes. He's, he always talks about seeing Krishna. Dutta Tapani, Durma da Bilob, the cool of Baham. Vidachata Chandaka, but the Nama, but the Namjakatam. Mamma the Shamam Yudati, Muritan, and Abimba Maho. Kimapikisho, the Dama, Madodam, Madodam, Madodam. Does anyone not understand those last three words? <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. <laughs> so he's saying, I learned that there's a certain highly refined gold called tapania, obviously heated even more than regular. So when that gets heated, it gives off a glow even more than red ordinary gold. So naturally that gold is very very proud of its glow. But he's saying that the, the, the silk garment that Krishna is wearing, his little dukula, which has a golden yellow, is, is destroying the pride of that gold. Dutta tapania durmada vilopi, destroy and uh, he's wearing, Krishna's wearing a beautiful uh, ornament, not just a peacock plume, but a, a whole arrangement of peacock plumes on his head that he's put together. But he himself is the ornament for the whole universe. And, and then it says, He's come before my eyes. He's blind, but it's spiritual vision. With his wonderful, joyful face, it's just like a full autumn moon. Now the word kimipi, it's two words together, is an, is an idiom which often means in Sanskrit, it's beyond my words, ineffable, I- indescribable. I'm, just, you know, I'm trying to describe it, but it's beyond my words. Kimipi kishoda dhamma. So the word dhamma means more than a place where you know, Krishna engaged in his pastimes. It means also a whole aspect of something, an aura that someone has. So his adolescent aura, his kishoda dhamma, is just madaram, 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 the sweetest of the sweetest of the sweetest. So that's just one you know, verse of meditation. <laughs> so, so you can imagine if someone is always absorbed in that, you know, practically you forget to eat. That, that, as the goes from me, that eating and sleeping becomes secondary. What to speak of any other kind of so-called sense gratification. It doesn't, e- it's not, doesn't even cross your mind anymore. Whereas Bilba Mangal had been an a, a incurable uh, woman, uh, woman chaser. You know, he, had, he was born a Brahmin, but he got into that, and, and his, his uh, prostitute was named Chintamani. You know the story. And she was the one who told me, if you had, you know, as much attraction for, for Krishna as you have for this stool-ridden body of mine, you would be a great soul. Boom! It just struck him. He left me, and he went and started going to Vrindavan. <laughs> Along the way, he got attracted again, and then, you know, amazingly, put out his own eyes. So he wouldn't, his, his eyes wouldn't distract him. But he's always writing these verses about having the beautiful vision of Krishna. Krishna himself came to feed him in, in Vrindavan. He lived 700 years in Vrindavan, writing all these. Yeah. So anyway, we got a little far afield from the Jayate Miyate. But uh, that's, that's the, the choice we have. Are we going to keep groveling around in this material world looking for a little insignificant sense gratification, which, keeps us, which are the bars that keeps us here? Or are we going to serve the great souls and follow the instructions and uh, become purified so we can become eligible to enjoy spiritual happiness. Yes, Dr. Mike. Mike. Mike for Mike. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 
So you pose the, the question, and it's, like you say, it's a very simple question. Obviously, anybody would make this choice, the same choice to, yeah. to the eternal bliss and so on and so forth. So isn't the answer pretty simple, at least for the majority of people? I'm speaking for myself, okay? But it seems like if we had that true faith that this was the choice, of course we would all make it. So it's either, for me, I feel like, The deeper part of me, of course, believes 1,000%. But this other part still says, hey, it maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe, and then I'm going to give up everything I can enjoy on this plane. And it's also that aren't the majority of people lazy? Like, you can't just, you have to put in the work, right? To get there. Yes, of you course. You can't just say, yes. okay, I'll, I'll take that choice. Give it to me now. Show, show me. The, give me the key. Is there a key? Give me the key, and I'll, I'll believe you. Yeah. Yeah. So of course, they're, they're very, it seems to me like there there are reasons why even people that are aware of it forget all the people that aren't aware of it. That's all. But yeah. Though, like, well, well, you, if, if you will, because we're running out of time. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, the, this is the this is the uh, the struggle because we. This is what probably called conditioning. You know, when you're conditioned to think in a certain way and act in a certain way, uh, it's very it's hard to change that. I mean, I I always liked I, I you know by Krishna's grace, I had only a uh, slight uh, association with drugs and people taking drugs, but but I saw and I experienced and I know how powerful it can be. Just even cigarettes, Prabhupada knew how how strong that was, and he didn't insist. Absolutely not. You can't smoke any cigarettes. In, in the first devotees, he was told, try to decrease one a day, you know, realizing how powerful it was. So the, so the idea is this idea of addiction. There's a word in, um, that it appears in the, in the Gita. There's one meaning. When, when Krishna's talking about the process of transmigration in the 15th chapter, those who are familiar with it, he says, when you leave this body, you know, and you're not going back to God, this is a conditioned soul, then the next body... Uh, Shrotram Chaksham Sparshanangcha Rasanam Granameva Vicha Adistaya Manaschaya Vishyana Pusevate. The mind, which includes the, 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 the holy impressions, it doesn't die, right? That's the subtle body. So then you get into another body and you have a certain uh, eye and ear and nose and all this other senses. And Vishyana Pusevate, that's the last line, which means you are, uh, I think Prabhupada says you're experiencing or you're enjoying these, a certain set of sense objects. But the word upasevate, I looked it up in the dictionary, can also mean you become addicted to a certain scent. And probably we often talk about that, how the hog, you know, if you get born as a hog, then you're going to want a certain kind of food stuff. So I'm not even going to mention it. You all know it is. It's unmentionable. You know? <laughs> so how could that be? Because you have a certain body and mentality and that's what you deserve. So th the point is, is that changing our conditioning is not easy. That's the struggle. We're so habituated. But that's why uh, 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 understanding the philosophy is so important and hearing it. Because the, the intelligence, if it's strengthened, you can control the lower self by the higher self. And you understand, okay, I'll, I'm going to undergo this austerity because I know and I've, I've, I've heard and I have faith, and faith is so important, that it's real, that on the other side, I'll be free of this, this, this bondage to this thing that I want to try to give up and I'll be able to experience more and more of the reality. And if you're in it, fortunate enough to be in association with some people who are showing those symptoms, you can say, yeah, it's encouraging. I was just like you. And I did this, did this, and you say like that. So it's a question of faith, not only in Krishna, but in yourself, that Krishna can empower me to overcome these, these uh, very strong conditionings. You know, it's, it's, it is a struggle. Um, but it's, but it's, this, it's, the, it's the best and really the only worthwhile struggle in this world. Otherwise, we struggle so hard for material goals and they're eventually we've lost. It's, it's, a, it's a tragedy. Okay, we have to adjourn. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hari Hari Bo.